Hey guys, Stevie here, and today I'll be going over sending something over to the UCP, which stands for Universal Control Panel, and explaining some things you'll find in the printer property settings, which is actually the laser uh, settings. So in the previous video, I finally finished and made something that I want to cut out from the laser cutter, uh, and that's this name tag right here. When you're finally content with everything here on Illustrator, then you are indeed ready to send it over to the laser cutter. The weird part here is that the laser cutter actually works like a printer driver, which technically means that any application that can print can use the laser cutter, which technically means we never had to learn any of this Illustrator nonsense. But I don't actually think it's nonsense and I was just messing around, but that's always my opinion. We could have just as easily used Word or MS Paint. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and hit File Print. So when we hit print, initially, instead of going somewhere uh, like to actually print, it's actually connecting now to the UCP. And now you can see that our file is almost ready to go and ready to cut in the UCP. But uh, that's, a, of course, assuming that if we go to print, uh, that you're using the right printer driver, which it's always going to be PLS 6.150D. If that's not the correct driver, then it won't work. So just make sure you have that enabled. If we go to setup and then go to preferences for this driver, uh, what'll happen is you're actually brought up to the laser settings instead, which, you know, it's, it's a lot to take in. So now that we see here with the control settings popped up, you may be thinking that this is a whole lot to take in and you're like, man, what the heck? Well, don't worry, you actually don't have to change that much unless you get into the advanced videos and I'll explain that in another video. So, now, sometimes the screen won't actually look like this at all, and that's probably because me or somebody else used the laser cutter last and messed with a lot of settings without turning them back, because we suck. So to avoid any potential errors or problems you'll face, you always want to start by doing one thing, and that's going over the materials database tab, which is over here, and selecting some random material, well not random material, but some material that best fits what you're attempting to cut. And that's uh, just because like sometimes you might run into, instead of the laser cutter looking like this, sometimes you'll run into something looking like this, where just about everything that you've ever been used to is messed up. So if you go over to the materials database and you pick, I guess, a material that matches pretty closely to what you're about to cut, we'll, we'll do general softwoods just for uh, a demonstration and then you hit apply. If you go over to the manual control settings, you'll see that all of these settings actually just uh, just changed, which is really nice. And it's, it's kind of like a good start to where you should be getting towards. Okay, so technically speaking, it doesn't actually matter too much uh, what material you specify as you'll be changing some of these settings here later. But you can see here that ULS gave us uh, all this materials database that pretty much works. You can find most materials that you could ever want to laser cut here. But my major quarrel with this materials database is that a lot of times they may be too specific. And if you just look at if you just look at wood here, you have to make a, a a really big decision of like what wood you're using. And if you're just using something like ply, you really have no way of. Uh, of knowing like when you're touching wood, how do you know between general soft woods and general medium woods? I don't know about you, but I don't feel pieces of wood and just think to myself, yep, this is a medium piece of wood I'm feeling here. This is medium hardness. Like I, I personally wouldn't know, but if you do, then perfect. You can just choose any of these, uh, any of these materials and be on your very merry way. Okay. so. All right, let's go on to the next part. So again, uh, you don't actually have to uh, spend too much time here, especially because uh, over in the manual control settings, the, the hardest one to get down is actually the, the color black, which is going to be everything you're using to engrave. That's your raster cutter. So anything that you want to engrave, it's, it's a lot harder to think about what you want for power to, and speed. So. Uh, because of this, all of this uncertainty, I actually took the liberty of providing everybody, well not everybody, but providing a power and speed setting swatch for both wood and acrylic. 
so you don't have to keep guessing every single time. It's actually attached to the right laser cutter, and basically for every 10% increment between power and speed, there's a little square that's been etched in to reflect that power and speed setting, so you can physically touch and see uh, you know, what, what you're looking for here and the, uh, the rest and the black color setting. Hey guys, uh, this is what the wood swatch is gonna look like. Uh, it'll be on the right laser cutter, and this is what the acrylic swatch is gonna look like. And as you can see, uh, there's a swatch for every increment of 10% between power and speed. So, this is just for your reference. I'd recommend you guys use it. So that's just a nice thing to know. So again, you don't actually have to spend too much time here in the materials uh, database. You can just pick one. I'll choose general medium woods and uh, I'll, I'll show you what else you can do. So there's this thing here called material thickness, right? And so what material thickness is uh, is doing here, it's, it's, uh, it's asking you one, how thick the piece of wood that you could be working with is. And what it'll do is it'll manually adjust what the uh, the vector cut should be. So right now I, I specified something that's around a quarter inch and this is the vector cut that I gave me. Uh, this is the vector power and speed settings that it gave me. If I make it a lot bigger, like let's say 3.3 uh, inches, you should see that the vector uh, speed settings change to reflect that. And you know, you, you can use that to your own accord, but uh, there's some other things you can do too, like uh, say this vector performance here. So the cool thing about this is, uh, say you were cutting a really thick piece of wood and you didn't want to spend so much time just going over and over and over again. Like you don't want to run the laser too much because that's just very time consuming. What you can do is you can increase the vector performance and where it's it'll say throughput plus uh, some numerical uh, value there. And what it's actually doing is it's actually increasing the intensity of the vector laser. And so what that means is that uh, that it's just it's kind of increasing the power without like adjusting the power and speed settings there. So what it means is uh, it, it's just, it won't take as many passes as it normally would if it was at like through plus one. It just, it will take significantly fewer passes. So that's just always nice to know. And uh, okay, next thing here is, uh, so uh, the next part only applies to the left laser cutter, but it's integral that you know how to do this. So if you're still in the materials database tab with me here, uh, if you're working on the left laser cutter, you'll actually see this air assist box here and you wanna make sure that you, uh, that every single one of these here has a checkbox here. And you don't want it to have a checkbox of gas, you want it to have a checkbox of air. And that just makes sure that there's air actively coming out of the laser nozzle. And that'll just make sure that nothing gets stuck to the lens or any particulate dust keeps getting trapped in the nozzle. And that just makes sure that our lens has a long life and that it won't crack under your, um, it most likely won't crack under your care, which is what you want because you don't want to be the person that forgets to put this on and then the laser cracks and then everybody gives you a bunch of crap for it. I know I will, I'll personally, I, I personally will not let you live it down. I won't let you hear the end of it uh, because it's a very easy thing to prevent. Uh, all you have to do is just give these, uh, these three things check boxes and these are the three colors that most people work with, uh, red, blue, and black. And so when you have everything that you, uh, that you think you, you're looking for here, just hit apply. And then over in the manual control settings, you, ha you have uh, all of your settings that are reflected for what you just put in into the materials database. Now, um, this next part is something that y'all will probably wanna pay very close attention to. So uh, you can only get so accurate with the materials database here. You're, you're usual, most of the time probably going to have to mess with the power and speed settings yourself. 
And here's how you would actually do so. So you just click whatever color you want to work with. Say you want to change the color black to, uh, you see on the swatch that like, let's say 50 and 70 look good to you. But well, once, once you input uh, the power and speed settings, you have to hit set. And once you hit set, you, you should see here now that the uh, black color is, is updated with the changes that you just put in. Now you also want to be careful not to select multiple colors at a time. You'll see what colors are selected by which ones are highlighted because if you do so, whatever, if you change power here and speed here, you will see that both of them are now the exact same thing and you, you don't want that. So I'll go ahead and actually I'll go ahead and just change this again and hit apply and you see that it uh, it just changed anyway. So again, uh, just be mindful of that. So you're usually going to spend a much longer time changing the black settings and trying to figure out what you want there. Uh, the red vector cutting settings, are it's usually much easier to uh, work with here. So the nice thing about vector cuts is that the power is always going to be at 100%. So the only thing you actually have to worry about is speed. And so my general rule of thumb is that uh, if you're using wood, the speed should be anywhere from four to 10%, uh, depending on the thickness and whether or not you want the edges to be burned. I find that a good 7% usually gets the job done for just about everything. And that in tandem with uh, changing the throughput of the vector here, or you can, also, you can actually also change it over here, so just uh, that together should allow you to uh, change. Whoa, it changed again, my bad. That together should change just about anything you could possibly need. So just just remember that. And then for acrylic, the, the power again is always going to be at 100%. Uh, anywhere from eight to 12% speed works pretty, pretty fine for acrylic. Uh, but for acrylic, you know, you're going to want the vector performance can, to be on the lower side of things because you don't, if you heat it up too much or if the intensity is too great, if the throughput's too high, you'll end up warping the acrylic just a little bit. So uh, to combat that, just, you know, make sure that uh, the throughput's not too high and the speed's not too low and stuff like that. Okay, so one last check step for those of you using the left laser cutter. For the colors that you're using, you should be able to, uh, or you should see that if you hit all of those check boxes, that all of these colors have a flow rate of 100%, which is what you're looking for. That means that the air is actually going to work for all of these three colors that you're working with. Now, if you're working with an additional color, say like green, uh, you know, you're gonna wanna change that flow to be 100% too. And here's actually how you do it. So one, uh, when you highlight it, if you didn't already do it in the check boxes over there, if you highlight it and go over to flow, hit air and make sure this flow right here is at 100% and hit set. And then when you hit set, you should see that the settings are actively changed. And, you know, just make sure you don't mess that up because you don't want to be the person that cracks the lens. We haven't had a broken lens in some time, so just don't let it be you. But if it just cracks due to overuse, we recognize it's not your fault. And we won't mess with you about that. But uh, that's about it. Once you're content, content with all of your settings, be sure to hit apply. Uh, if you don't hit apply uh, before you hit okay, you'll actually have to do the entire thing over again, which I don't really have to say is quite the inconvenience. So uh, once you're sure that these are the settings that you indeed want, hit okay. Hit print and print. And you should see when you go over to the UCP that all of these settings have, uh, have been saved over. Now, uh, what's nice is uh, if you mess up the settings beforehand, uh, while you're messing with the, the picture here in the laser cutter, you can actually change them again here. So that's basically everything I have to cover through in this video. In the next video, we'll actually talk about the different tools that you can use here in the UCP. Don't mind the picture too much. It always looks a little wonky, but uh, however you see it in Illustrator is usually most of the time how it's going to look. So uh, we can see here that the line segments are looking a little weird, but they won't actually look like that once they're actually laser cut. Okay, 
So that's everything I have to explain in this video. I hope to see you in the next one where we learn about the different tools in the UCP and that should be the last video before you're ready to laser cut in full. Okay, thank you, see you.